start from. Uh, so, we will refer to this diagram. So, the assumption that we are making is the gravity anchors which can only uh, give say horizontal force. Now, we have to calculate this uh, tension in the uh, minimum length of chain cable. So, what was our expression for S? The uh, expression for S at C bed. So, this was our expression. So, this we have already derived. So, and, and what was the expression for Z plus H? So, so T H over W. So, this multiplied by cos hyperbolic. This is how much X W over T H. So, this minus 1. So, this you put this bracket. So, these two expressions we will use. Now, you put L S equal to S. Now, z plus h is equal to h where obviously at z equal to 0. So, this is at water surface. Now, if this be uh, you put uh, the small a as T h by w. So, our expression for L s becomes L s equals to s. So, length of chain cable let us write as L s. So, this is a sin hyperbolic what is this x w over t h? This is x by a. So, this is sin hyperbolic of x by a. So, that is simple. Okay. Now, what is the value of h? Can you simplify this expression? So, h we can get the z plus h. And write down the expression for h. So, this is your I want to get rid of this z value. So, this is z plus h equal to h at z equal to 0. So, this is h equals to t h over w from this expression. So, this uh, is cos hyperbolic of this, but you substitute uh, this a. So, this becomes cos hyperbolic so this you write this is uh, 18 or 19 so this you write 19 now you put a th over w so this will be h is equals to a multiplied by this is how much <coughs> x by a minus 1. Now, using these two equations, so we have found out 
L s equals to s and h value we have already found out. Now, L s sorry L s we have found out this s is from this you use these two equations. This is from 19, this is 20, 20 and 21. you calculate this L s square minus H square. And then you simplify. So, this will be A square sin hyperbolic square x by a. This is simple substitution that is all and this will be th, this is a square, I square it. So, this will be cos hyperbolic square x by a minus twice any simplification you can bring. You can simplify these two terms. So, from here how much you are getting? So, x by a and this is only minus a square. So, can this be simplified? So, this is a square. Or so this is how much? This twice cos hyperbolic. Yeah, this will be 2 a square cos hyperbolic x by a. Well, this is sin square minus cos square by your minus sin square. So, this is equals to no, there a square will be there, is not it? So, this will be minus 2 a square, right? 2 a square will cancel out. So, this is 1, I think from here this will minus 2 a square will come. So, this is minus 1 I think. So, this is minus a square minus a square so minus 2 a square and this 2 a square cos hyperbolic x by a is coming. So, this is 2 a square cos hyperbolic x by a minus 1. So, this is our expression. So, from here, but uh, what about cos hyperbolic x by a? So, what was our expression for h? So, from this equation that is you calculate cos hyperbolic x by a. So, h plus a. So, this is h plus a minus a sorry h by a plus 1. Uh, this is uh, this one is uh, h by a. So this is equals to two a square multiplied by h by a. So from this expression, h by a is cos hyperbolic x by a minus one. 
<coughs> so we are getting a ultimately we have got a simple expression. So that is a the square minus h square is equals to twice a h. So that means square of this is h square plus twice h. So, this expression we have got. Now, you write down the expression for line tension. So, line tension what was our equation that T capital T. Th plus W multiplied by H plus W plus rho G A and you keep outside bracket that Z value. So, this expression we have already derived previously. So, this is where we have and I think your notes is a good jumbled up this expression. Now, you put z equal to 0. So, maximum tension where does it occur? Now, where does maximum tension occur? z equal to 0 or z equal to minus h. You now, z will have a negative sign. So, it is minus h obviously it is going to reduce this value. So, maximum tension occurs at z equal to 0. So, that is at water surface. So, T max we will get this as T h plus W h. So, this expression is to be remembered. And the other expression that we have got that is the length of the chain cable from here that is L square. is equals to h multiplied by you keep h outside bracket. So, this is h plus twice a. Now, you a you tell me what is the expression for a we have given. This is a uh, t h by w. Yes, a is t h by w. So, a square ultimately becomes h multiplied by twice T H by W plus H. So, now you tell me in the length of minimum line. So, you substitute this expression that is all. So, T h is how much? This uh, say this is equation number 22 is not it. So, from 22 you just substitute tell me to what is T h by W or from 22 you write T h is equals to T max minus W h. So, L square what is the expression? So, you keep H outside bracket. So, this will be twice of. Uh, so, this uh, a, a equation will be T H you put this this is T max over W T max over W 
and this is minus h. You do not forget this minus h and outside the bracket you write plus h. So, this is minus 2 h plus h, so this becomes minus h. So, ultimately we are getting L square as h multiplied by 2 t max over w minus h. So, you can bring h outside. So, this is h square into 2 t max divided by w minus 1. Any more simplification? So, from this you can calculate. So, L s is equals to h into root over w x will come, w h will come. Yeah, the w h will come. So, this is 2 t max over w h minus 1. So, this is what? Instead of L s you write therefore, this will be L minimum because you are putting T max. So, L s will be minimum when t equals to t max <coughs> and this occurs where occurs at z equal to 0 that is at water surface. So, this is the equation for minimum length of chain cable. So, the two vital equations that we have derived are one is this L minimum, the other you remember is this expression tension T now the other portion which will go into the descriptive part before we talk about all the coupling terms <coughs> just to make you familiar with the physical concept of these moonings. Now, moorings are quite vast in your offshore. Now, the different types of mooring is first you break down into the different types. So, here you will find uh, this has become very hazy. So, offshore mooring systems. Now, at the beginning of the class, I gave you classification of offshore structures. You remember that? So, what are the two major classes? So, offshore mooring systems. So, this you should study with the classification of offshore st structure. The offshore structures are primarily classed as fixed and floating. And another fixed category also you will have uh, yeah, subdivisions. So, similarly out here also you will get a large number of subdivisions and more than your simple offshore structures. Now, primarily you subdivide into this 
two locations. The first one you sheltered and semi sheltered. You know, what is this sheltered and semi sheltered business? Now, here you go what is called the type of fixed structure, this is a fixed structure that we will have out here, these are called sea islands. You just imagine you are making an island in the sea, huh? artificial island. So, these are called sea islands, an example you can find is that I think they have this kind in Bombay. Bombay High. So, there is an offshore terminal, and the offshore oil terminal is a sea island. Now, here at this end, these are called exposed locations. So, the, this variety there is sea islands you will find normally in the outer harbor. So, Bombay outer harbor if you go you will find a sea island. So, that is uh, that Mahim creek or whatever it is there. So, that gives a shelter to the waves. Now, obviously you will not try to transfer oil from your tanker to the uh, say jetty where you are having lot of motions. Mm. So, those motions will come when the tanker is berthed in a exposed location. Now, exposed locations the number of boilers and mooring systems are quite large. So, you will have a tree sort of thing out here. Now, here actually you have to play around with the design. So, here you have multi boyer mooring systems. So, this uh, sea island is more of your civil engineering structural engineering job, and this is more your the naval architectural aspects, but the primary concern is uh, reduction of motions. On the other hand you have single point moorings. So, normally these are called SPMs. Now, there are large variety of SPMs you will find. So, right if you come from this, you have the two primary ones. Are your single SBMs moorings or rather it is called single boyer mooring. Now, in this in your study of offshore mooring system, you come across different configuration of boyers. Uh, your TLP tension like platform or semi submersible is nothing but a large or massive boyer. So, there are various boyers actually. So, these are the categories of these are the actually the various types of boyers you will find. So, single boyer moorings. Now, in short they are called this single point mooring you will have these are the fixed type of structure. So, these are the floating structure this is SBM. 
this the other one is called single point mooring tower. This is called SPMT. Now, under, under this single boy mooring, you will have a large category of boils. So, as many as four types you will get. But the problem is there are so many variations of the boys, but which one you select? This is single boyer with catenary anchor leg. What is the difference between catenary and the single anchor leg? Now, single boy with rigid arm. The last one of SBM is this is Boya with three articulated moorings. So, these are the four types which come under SBMs, so single boyer moorings. Now, single point mooring tower, so as you can see that from the name suggests that this is a fixed tower. So, you will have only two such types. So, fixed tower. I hope you can see this, huh? already this is coming too much down. So, fixed tower. Now, what are the functions of this boy and tower mooring? with swiveling base. So, these are some of the broad categories of your mooring systems. So, you can see the mooring systems are quite, uh, they are more specific than your just description of offshore structures. If you go into the offshore engineering field, you will be asked to design all these things. Now, the point is your wire design. So, basically here actually we are dealing with wire design. Now, wire design you can see the various, I will just draw some figures if you have time, time then you can see the categories of wire, but how are you going to design? So, first thing as in any offshore structure or any structure for that matter, calculate the 
environmental loads. Now, this you have to get from there is your wind waves and current. So, whether it be your tension leg platform or semi thermal, so even for these smaller boyers, your environmental load calculation is a must. This you have to find out the forces from wind wave and current. This is the first job. Number second job is calculate C response or rather you write C motions. Very important because you are going to transfer oil from the boiler to the tanker and any undesirable motions you calculate all this especially here you will find the most troubling is your heave excessive heave on the boiler will cause your loading hose to snap so heave has to be calculated what are the other motions pitch which is another detrimental motion and surge and sway motions. Surge is on the longitudinal direction, the translation and the sway. So, these motions have to be calculated. Heave, pitch, surge and sway motions. Now, how do you calculate that? Now, this you have to first thing normally you have to find out from your the forcing spectra that is normally your or your wave spectra or current spectra. So, this I talked about in your mid semester that is the wave spectra, the you find out the equations you have to multiply by a certain function which is called the transfer function. So, your transfer function is normally in our naval architecture calculation we say this is your rau that is your response amplitude operator. Now, from this you get Boyer response. Now, you can do all this in your tank, but this is not done in here that uh, the ship model tank that we out here. You can ask Professor Sen whether you can do this motion, you can find out these rows, that it is, but it is a good experimental study. The normal experimental study, I do not know, you are making some experiments, you are doing some experiments in the tank, no? Yes. that model testing that you are doing, and that is one part of your job. Now, other is raw calculation can you do now here since you are having a wave maker you can make a model of a offshore structure and find out the response of the offshore structure with a certain wave spectra so these calculations you ask for process and if it can be done you can do it and see how it is the rows are normally calculated from tank experiments okay so, in Madras society they do this for a sea keeping, normally they do it in a what is called a sea keeping basin. So, that is a square tank, which of course, we are not having here sea keeping, but the uh, problem in the narrow tank that is in your resistance tank, you will have the wall effect that is the waves will come and reflect from that wall, because the your the breadth of the tank is hardly how much 4 meters or some 4 and a half meters. So, you get a lot of wave reflection, but still you ask Professor Sen if this can be done then we can go about it. So, anyway, so this is your second job is calculate 
C motions. Uh, what is the third important aspect for boyers? The third most important aspect is ship colliding or overriding with boyer. So, whenever you are doing boyer design, this factor has to be taken care of that is ship colliding or overriding boyer. So, then that means your boyer is going to get damaged. That is in you know, offshore, another important area of study is they call it vessel impact. Vessel impact especially on this structure has to be calculated. We ship colliding or overriding where especially this occurs, normally this occurs in a storm. So, storm conditions you will find this sort of thing happening, uh, if this collide collision and overriding is taking place, there is a chance for delivery hose snap. So, your delivery hose um, starts breaking at this juncture. And of course, this will cause damage to both your ship and boyer, colliding with and boyer. So, collision is another important aspect that you have to keep in mind. And when you are doing these motion calculations, number 4 is motion calculations and this is quite complex actually. So, motion calculations. to be done with ship and boyer. Ship and boyer together. So, this is quite a complex task. Motion calculation. So, normally uh, uh, you can do some simulation in the computer. Nowadays, they have lot of software which can software simulation you can do. And this OrcaFlex, they does this. So, this software simulation, uh, maths is quite troublesome. So, if you go deeper into the offshore field, you have to be very proficient in your IT, your computers and maths. So, these are the four aspects which are to be remembered and the last, what is the last most crucial aspect? Very crucial is, I told you in any ocean engineering, water depth is another very important factor. Boyer design. So, these are some of the points to remember in Boyer design. Now, here in your ship design, you you come across first you do your cal you begin your design spiral. And these are the spokes. So, there will be number of iterations going on till you come to the final design. So, either you can go like this or you can go in the reverse direction. So, you have to construct a design spiral. So, 
So, here it may be you, you start with your requirement. Now, what is your requirement? So, two things we are coming into this one is the environmental you begin with environmental load calculation and the other part is your requirement or owner's requirement. Now, what can be that? Now, boya you will find there will be lot of top side equipments say pumps, compressors, pipings and all that. So, the, the capacity of those equipments or size are dictated by what? Dictated by owner's requirement. What is that owner's requirement? BPD of oil, barrels per day of oil that you are going to lift from the seabed onto the tanker. So, this is your capacity. And normally, these boyers they do not have any storage. So, this is the capacity and if there is any storage requirement or temporary right temporary storage. Because ultimately, you are offloading your cargo to a tanker, is not it? So, storage requirement. Yeah, this is very important. So, these are the two things you start. So, here you find out your waves, wind, etcetera, load. From this, you calculate hydrostatics. Boya has a hydrostatics that to be calculated. Then, out here, you have motions like this, you go on. And you keep on iterating. And that iterating means you change the dimension of the boya. So, dimensions are basically your diameter and the depth or the length of the boya. The other dimension is boyas are normally cylindrical in shape. So, you keep on changing till you get the favorable response. And here are motions, then structural structure will be there. So, nowadays you have softwares which calculate all this. If you go to the design office or your consulting firm, you will be asked to handle all this software, the Orca Flex, SACS and all these things, you know, do all these calculations. And there are other software is there, they are called C load. So, actually the bigger multinationals, they have their own design and research wing. And they make their own softwares. They do not rely on any external software. Well, external software nowadays, the software that you are building is based on certain theory. So, simply if you tell your client that you are using this software, he will not be satisfied. He will say, what is, what software, what you have done, what is there over there in the theory, what you have analyzed, why you have used uh, SACS and not ANSYS and not that software. It is very, if your client is knowledgeable and intelligible, he is going to ask you all sorts of uncomfortable questions. So, the, normally all these multinational companies, they have their own softwares. Isn't it? And if you use any tailor made software, then uh, you, you can use it, but the things normally the client either the client will ask or ultimately all these boys have to be classified by certain your class societies. Any marine engineering or ships or offshore structure has to be class, you know. So, the, you have to convince the surveyor with your calculations and with their minimum requirements. So, either it has to be ABS class, ABS, DNV class, then 
normally if you are in the American waters, you have to follow API code. So, that means a, a chap who is or your client if he is very, very experienced, then you have to convince him, then especially on the on these five requirements, software you are using, algorithms you have used. And of course, the final result that you have got, the uh, structural arrangement, thicknesses and all that have to be okayed by these people. ABS, DNV, you have Lloyds, but in the offshore actually, the more popular class classification societies are ABS, DNV. And the API is actually, they are more concerned with safety. American Petroleum Institute, you may have USCG regulations, if it is in the Gulf of Mexico, United States Coast Guard. So, because you are dealing with a flammable material that is oil, so, that means there are stringent safety and pollution requirements, especially in uh, the US coast. So, those requirements have to be satisfied. So, here the, that I was talking about only one aspect and that too also we have not fully covered, that is your the, the static analysis of the mooring chain but simply use, we just go on see designing a boyer you are in, simple boyer will ask for so many uh, equations and so many maths and all that, your FEM, CFD and what not will be there, because of the intricacies of all these motions and environmental loads. So, that is the scenario and remember all these loads and motions, they are all coupled. You may have heave along with pitch, with surge and sway. So, you have coupled motions. So, the maths part is quite complex, but um, in your engineering actually, you have to understand the physics behind all these motions. Anyway, so that is the, this is the gist of the problem and coming to the Boyer descriptions, since we have some time, the, the on the those considerations that is your environmental load and the five points, how many five points that you have underlined, but those are okay. The other point that is important is who is going to pay the bill, cost. The, this is the last point, although very important. So, those are some of the decisions and uh, here there are some diagrams, they are called articulations. Now, remember in our uh, classification of offshore structures, there is one particular category which I told you which is called compliant structures. Now, most of these boyers come under that category. So, articulations are part of compliant structures. Now, here is an example of a articulated mooring. So, that is called ALC. ALC you will find, now these boyers are quite massive in their form. So, here you have a deck. Uh, 
you may have a crane. Now, normally this boy in our deck you will find a turntable. You will have uh, here it has not been shown, the whole thing actually rotates. And out here you may have the, the water line. So, this is a cylindrical boy. Now, boy mechanics is uh, if you go for this joint type of thing and seabed, so then it is quite complicated. You have to make a structure in the seabed like this. A concrete base. Now, this is called a cardan joint. So, one joint can be in this region and uh, other joints of course, here is not being shown. This is your concrete base. Now, the diagram that I have drawn out here, so these are normal fenders you will get. This is your water line, this is called a ALC. Articulated loading column. The articulation is at the seabed, that is your seabed line. Now, cardan joint I think will give you motion in one direction, but not in this direction, it is not a universal joint. The other structure you can just out here is your uh, loading hose, normally this is your suspension point. Now, this hose is taken up by your tanker, by a messenger rope. So, your tanker is somewhere in this position here, this is called a FSU, floating storage unit. Now, this is your loading hose. Your yeah, messenger rope. So, this is one type of boya. So, there are various forms of this uh, compliant structure or articulated type. So, here you have just one cardan joint, you may have other joints. Normally, you will find joints coming joints are located at the seabed. So, they are mean sea level and this is your seabed. Joints are located at seabed and at the water line and in all cases of these columns, you will have a turnstile over which you have your uh, winches, heli deck will come somewhere here and you may have a deck house also. These boyers are not small boyers. I can see in the Hooghly River that one uh, anchor line is just hooked to a mooring boyer. That type of boyer is not there, but huge boyers actually. 
So, this is your the marine riser is actually enclosed within the boya. This is your marine riser is protected. So, this is maybe concrete also, concrete column. This is your marine riser. So, marine riser is somewhat protected from collision from the tanker. In other cases, you will find that it is exposed. So, which one you are going to select? It is up to you.